Hey, welcome back to Paul's Outdoor Academy. I appreciate you joining me for another video today. On this video, I'm going to show you the process of swapping out the axle on this boat trailer. You can probably see I have some tools out here. I have some car stands and a jack. You may be wondering, why are you going to swap out the axle on your trailer? That's the first question I would ask is, what's wrong with the one that you have? If you've watched my videos in the past, I have mentioned a couple of different things. One, I have mentioned a concern for the amount of weight that this boat has compared to the amount of weight that that trailer is meant to hold. That trailer is meant to hold 2,120 pounds, and so I know what the uh, maximum amount of weight is that's allowed on that trailer. I took my truck and my boat and trailer and I pulled it to a local landfill and I asked them if I could use their scale and they allowed me to and I weighed all of that and then I parked the boat on the trailer and I pulled just my truck across the scale. Well that gives me the weight of my truck and it gives me the total weight of my truck with the boat and trailer. So I was able to take that number and then take the published amount of weight for my boat and motor and I added about 20 pounds for equipment on there. And I was able to come up with a number and it kind of scares me a little bit because I'm within 30 to 50 pounds of the maximum amount of weight that's allowed on that trailer. And I wanna show you what happened. Okay, so I've moved the camera around to the right side of the boat. And what I wanna show you is what I noticed when I came home from fishing this weekend was all of this dark grease all on the wheel. And I noticed that the vault system uh, cap that goes on the outside of this that keeps all the grease inside the hub is gone. It's completely gone. I didn't think too much about that. I thought, well, someone either stole it or it just fell off and it allowed the grease to go everywhere, but there's actually way more to this. If you look inside the hub, you're gonna notice the same thing that I did, and that is the bearing is gone. <laughs> the race is in there, but the bearing's gone. All right, so now that I've shown you what the other side of the boat looks like, and you can clearly see the grease on the wheel, you can see that there is no bearing. It's completely gone. It obliterated on the way home from Chickamauga. And you can also see that the spindle is riding directly inside the hub. And that did that all the way from Chickamauga to the house. All right, so I'm already almost out of daylight on the first day of filming this video. But what I'm gonna to try to get done really quick is at least get it jacked up off the ground and get ready to start removing the axle. And I'm gonna use some blocks of wood and I'm gonna put those between the jack stand and the frame to try to keep from damaging the frame. There's a really good spot to jack this frame up underneath the boat where there's an extra piece of metal welded onto the frame. Maybe that's even why they put it there. I have no idea. I'm going to start jacking this up and I'm just gonna let the camera roll for right now. Okay, so one of the first things that I've done is I have jacked the motor up as far as I can and I'm using the little support that comes with the boat that stops the motor from going down any further. All right, I'm out of time for today, but what I wanted you to see is this. <laughs> and so this is ruined. Uh, there's just metal eating all out of the inside of it. So this thing is shot for certain. And I'll get this cleaned up on the next run and see how bad it is. But I'm rather certain that at least the spindle on this side is ruined. So this is day one and this is where I've gotten to on day one. So welcome back, it's day number two. What I wanted to do was give you a good look at what I found when I took the hub off. You notice I haven't even taken, uh, what do you call those, a cotter pin? Haven't taken that out, haven't taken any of this stuff out. There is the inside cup for the bearing. So now you've seen what I saw when I took the hub off this side and most likely this thing's ruined. Well, as you can see, the weather is a little bit better. At least it's nice and it's daylight. 
and I'm not getting rained on and that is really important and so today I'm going to pick back up on this project and I have made the decision to go ahead and remove the leaf spring and the axle and so I'm going to show you what I did on this side of the boat I'm going to bring you over here and what I ended up doing over here was I have this loose you probably won't be able to see that much unless maybe I do this so now you can and I have left this bolt at least part of the way through this so that this just can't fall out and and hurt me um, but this thing's ready to come out as you can see the bolts loose here but I've still got it in uh, this is loose and this is the kind of leaf spring that just tucks into a slot right here I don't know what this is called one side has an eyelet as you see here one side has an eye and one side just slides in over here so that's what we've got uh, this is the good side I'm going to get the tools out and get set up and I'm just going to put the camera over here and let's just see what we can get done. Like I said, it's in the 30s. My hands probably going to get a little bit cold. Uh, hopefully I can keep them warm enough to keep working for a while. So let's just see what we can get done. Hey, just for kicks and grins, let's see how many times I can use the word shackle. All right, so let's talk about shackle bolts for just a minute. This is actually very important because if you don't remove this correctly, you're going to mess up the shackle that is welded to the frame on your boat. And it would be kind of hard to get that repaired. And so I want you to learn from what I've learned. The first thing is, what are you talking about? Well, there's a thing called a shackle that is circled there in green and it is welded to the frame. And within that shackle, there is a hole and that is where the shackle bolt goes. The most distinguishing part of a shackle bolt is right below the head of the bolt, you'll notice that the shaft is kind of different looking. It has these rough edges and it's slightly larger than the rest of the shaft. That is what makes a shackle bolt a shackle bolt. It is called knurled. And that just means that there's something there that's going to grab onto the shackle. And when you put it in, you're not gonna screw it into the shackle, you're gonna hammer it into the shackle. And then the actual nut goes on the other side. It is important that you do not put a socket on this bolt and try to turn it in the frame. And the reason is that if you do that, you're going to just strip the bolt out of the hole that it's in. The little section of it that is knurled will no longer get a grip on the frame and you'll just have a bolt that spins and that is not what you want in the case of a shackle bolt. We gotta see if we can get this thing shackle. out. Shackle, shackle. And I can't find another wrench that size. On my trailer, this is a 13 16th. And I am talking about the bolt and the nut that hold the leaf spring into the leaf spring shackle right here. So I'm getting ready to make some noise to see if I can get this off from underneath here. Okay, so I know I told you all don't turn this on this side and just use a wrench to hold it still. The problem is I could not find my 13 16 wrench. And so this is just to hold this in place. There you go. Okay, so at this point, here's what I'm gonna recommend you do. You're gonna take the nut that I'm showing you in my hand there, and you're gonna put it back on that bolt but you're only gonna put it on maybe halfway or even a quarter of the way back on the bolt. You're gonna take a piece of two by four and you're gonna put it on the nut on that side and you're gonna hit that with a mallet and if you have to, you're gonna hit it with a hammer. But that's how you're going to get that shackle bolt loose at this point. You're not going to put a wrench on it. Take that too far out. So the other side is very loose. This side's loose, I'm gonna go ahead all right, so just a word of caution here. This axle is only a, um, I'm pretty sure it's a 2,000 pound axle. And so I was not concerned about it being extremely heavy. I do not recommend you do what I'm doing in this. If you have like a 5,000 pound axle or a 7,500 pound axle, those things are gonna weigh a lot. 
And once you start hammering on that leaf spring, it is going to fall out of there and it's going to come out of there in a hurry with a lot of force. So what I should show you here is that I would recommend you put a cinder block or a piece of wood or whatever you've got under the axle somewhere down in this area down here. In case it falls, it'll have something to land on and hopefully you won't get hurt. So you can see now, this is, and this, he, this is not as heavy as I thought it would be. I was worried that this might be, you know, 50, 60, 80 pounds or something and be just heavy enough to be really awkward, but it's not. But you can see that this leaf spring is in this little cradle. Hopefully you can see this little cradle it's in right here. And what I'm going to do is lift up on it and slide that forward and then just lower this down. And that's all I did. Okay, so I'm going to pull this out. Okay, so first things first, this is what the vault system on a idler hub is supposed to look like. So what you're looking at right here is the aftermath of everything that happened on my way home from the lake and why I'm taking this axle off. This is what happened when I took the uh, wheel off and got it out of the way is that this thing just slid forward and fell off. So. When I say the man above has got my back and watching out for me, that's exactly what I mean. Uh, but the main thing is, if you look up inside here, you can see there are all kinds of grooves and damage that have been done up inside this. So this idler hub is absolutely ruined. Okay, so I'm going to talk for just a minute about how to identify your axle. If you need to know exactly what it is, the manufacturer is supposed to put one of these tags on it or stamp it into the axle. And it should have all kinds of information on it, such as who the manufacturer is and serial numbers and information like that. If you're going to keep this axle and you kind of want to know what the serial number is, this is a great way to find it. You simply take some sandpaper, sand it for about 17 hours, and your serial number will just pop right out just like that. And now it's time for another pro tip. Okay, I'm going to try to save you a lot of time here. I'm trying to be all fancy with this and put some kind of dissolving spray on it and I'm trying to use a wire brush. Don't do what I'm doing in this video. Don't waste your time. Don't be this guy. Oh my gosh. Be this guy. Much smarter. Again, don't do this. Oh my gosh. Now you do need to know those nuts are nylon threaded nuts, which means they have nylon on the inside of them so that once you tighten them down, they stay in place really, really well. Oh. The process of heating them with a torch like this basically ruins them because it's going to burn the nylon out of the inside of them. But can you see the difference? Look how fast I'm able to take them off once I heat them up. So you're going to see me repeat that process three additional times and that makes this job so easy. You'll also notice that I'm just babbling to absolutely no one because I'm so excited about how fast that was to get that off there. And of course, use something to move those around. Don't pick them up. Let's do that again. Did you learn from my mistake? All right, so what I'm going to show you here is with this can beside the spindle, I'm just going to turn the axle with my hand and I've sped the video up some so that you can see what it's doing and how it's shifting the can out of the way. That spindle has been bent ever since I bought the boat. Well, it's day three and I wanted to show you, I found a company uh, by recommendation from a lot of other folks named Sweetwater Metal Products in Sweetwater, Tennessee. And I literally called him this morning took my axle down there, went and grabbed lunch, and came back, and he had built me this. He built me this custom axle, which has a bearing buddy type of grease system. Uh, it's an idler hub. So here's the new hub. And then on top of the hub, I have a brake flange if I do want to add brakes. And got these welded up exactly where they need to be. Now it is raw. Uh, metal. I'm getting ready to at least put a coat of prime on there just to keep it from 
uh, or doing any kind of rusting before I get the opportunity to do more work to it. That's a 3,500 pound axle. And on top of that, they gave me the brackets and the nuts and the U-bolts to go with that because that is a square frame. There's the old one. And so here's the, uh, I was afraid I'd have to replace the leaf springs and he said, nope, you sure don't. So I am gonna be using these. I'll put some paint on these. And what I'm gonna do is just kind of set the camera down while I do some general sanding. And then I'm gonna try to do some priming. I don't know if this is gonna work or not. Uh, the reason being that it is only 41 degrees outside. And so I want to at least try to get something on it to keep it from, you know, very quickly starting to rust out on me. So I'm gonna to try to get it sanded a little bit, try to at least get a coat of primer on it, and then we'll go from there. All right, welcome back. Guess what day it is? It's the day to put some paint on this axle. It is so sunny out here, I've gotta wear sunglasses, and it is actually gonna be around the mid 60s today. So this is absolutely perfect for painting, and I'm really excited to see if I can't get the first coat, second coat, maybe all the coats on the axle today. So just gonna leave the camera running, and hopefully you can just kinda of watch what's going on back there, and wish me luck as I try to get the first coat of paint on this thing. If you're curious about what kind of paint I'm using, <laughs> I'm using U-Pole. This came from my local AutoZone. It's not the most expensive paint in the world, and it's also not the cheapest paint in the world. So we'll see what kind of coverage we get. All right, guess what? Today is the day. I'm gonna to go ahead and get this axle installed. It has 
sat three, four days now with paint on it in the garage and I've applied heat uh, slowly <laughs> for several hours at a time in the garage to keep the garage warm enough to let the paint really harden up on the axle. So I think it's ready to install. I did do one thing without filming it, and that is I put a clear coat on this. I put two coats of a really good Rust-Oleum clear coat on this on every single part and piece that I had. I cleaned up the leaf springs. I got those painted really good and a clear coat on those. And I put a good clear coat on the axle in hopes of uh, that protecting it from rock damage and stuff flying up as I go down the road. So it looks really, really good. It certainly looks better than the one that I took off. <laughs> So I haven't decided exactly which way I'm going to put the axle on the trailer just yet because there are a couple of different options. You could uh, put the leaf springs and the shackles on the axle and then lift all of that up into place, but it's going to be pretty heavy when you do that, especially this new 3,500 pound axle. It's definitely heavier than the previous axle that I had. But what I might do is take the leaf spring and go ahead and put the flat end in the bracket that holds it on the trailer that allows it to kind of hang down at an angle like this and then you can push this up in place and lock it in with the bolt that goes in it and i may go ahead and like get these in place i'm not sure yet we're just gonna play it by ear but i may put this in place get this kind of where it goes and go ahead and put the axle on it and get that tightened up really good and then lift this up into place and tighten it down you know put the bolt through it and tighten it down i'm not exactly sure yet we're just going to kind of have to learn as we go if you will but i'm very happy with how the uh, paintwork turned out on these good thick coat of black paint good thick coat of clear coat on them so let's hope that's going to take care of it all right i'm going to do this in phases and i'm going to show you how i'm going to do this because i'm going to be doing this alone like i said the axle is heavy i'm going to put the axle on a piece of wood on the right side of the boat back here and I'm going to try to slide it across by lifting one end and just hoping it'll kind of stay on that uh, wood and just keep scooting it that way until I get it to the other side well there it goes there we go I'm gonna get my blocks in place. Okay, so got some blocks up here. I would recommend cinder blocks, but I don't have any. So I'm gonna lift this and set this up on top of this, hopefully. Whew, it's a tight fit. What I've got is two blocks and a, and a towel on top of those just to kind of keep from scratching the uh, new paint that I put on as much as possible. But I've got this up out of the way now. And so in theory, let's see if my theory works. In theory, now this probably can go in here. This one block is in the way. But in theory, I should be able to get this in now. And now that I've got that driven in with a mallet, I'm going to put the nut in there. I'm going to tap it right up to there. Those last taps drove those little tabs into the shackle. And now that I've got that there, and this is in place back here, and this is in place here, I can feel really good about lowering the axle down onto the leaf spring now. So that is exactly what I'm going to do now. For safety's sake, I'm going to go ahead and take the nut for the shackle bolt and just get it started. And now, I don't think it can come out of there. But I need to get these blocks out of the way now of the axle. So, let's do that. But for right now, I'm just going to lay this right on that little hole where it goes. You gotta remember, on the bottom of the axle, there's a little hole on that bracket and it lays right on top of it, just like that. So I can leave this alone now while I go start the other side.
So hopefully you can see what I've done. I've got these two blocks. The only reason I'm doing that is just kind of protect the paint as much as I can. I'm going to set this up on that. Just like that. And get that out of the way. And then I can take this. Let me get you a look at this. Same process as before. Take the flat part of this and there's a place right there that was meant for it to slide in so that it can move a little bit as the boat goes up and down the road. Okay, so once you've got that in place, you can kind of let it go until you're comfortable and ready to work on the shackle part. I'm going to put this roughly where it looks like it's going to go, which is right there. That's really close. A little bit of a direction. There we go. There we go. There we go. And then I'm going to get this nut on here. And now I can feel really good about what we've got here. So I've got to get these blocks. I'm just going to lay this over here for a second. Very gently. We'll get these blocks out of the way. I can set this on its little hole. There we go. Had to push it around a little bit. But now both sides are where they go. And we're ready to mount this on permanently. All right. Next thing. Bom, bom, bom. These big things. We're going to just set this down on that side. I'm going to set this one down on this side for brand spanking new nylon threaded nuts. All right, so this is the bracket that's going to go underneath. Let me try to get you a view of, hopefully, can you see underneath here a little bit? It looks like you'll at least be able to see a little bit of it. But you're going to put this on. It has this little flare. And the flare goes down. The flare goes down. You can see the flare. That goes down and this goes just like this. And so I'm going to just take this. And there is one thing that can cause issues here. Fortunately, I'm not going to have to deal with it. But sometimes these are bent. I'm going to show you an example of what I'm talking about. But for right now, while I have this going, I'm just going to put a nut on that. And a nut on this side. All right, I have all four of those started, so now this can't go anywhere. I'll get this pulled in here nice and tight when I tighten those down. This is looking really, really good. Very excited about how that looks. But let me show you an example of what could be a problem. On this old one, when I took this apart, this is the old one, okay, sat like this right here. Let me get this apart for you. Now, it came apart really easy. These things have bent a little bit, and I could not get it started in that hole see they don't line up anymore and so what you'll end up having to do is if you have really good grip strength you might be able to hold it and get it started I had to use both hands on mine so I used both hands and smashed it together like that there we go and so I was able to use both hands and squeeze this hard enough to get it started up in these holes. But that's one thing about reusing your older equipment. I, if you're going to take the time to replace your axle, go ahead and replace this stuff. It's not even worth debating for what you'll pay for these. It was just not that much. And as you can see, you know, I've got brand new ones painted real nice. The nuts are brand new. And so, awesome. This is probably a good time to talk about the fact that I'm not putting brakes on this. Uh, in the earlier part of the video, I was seriously debating on putting brakes on this. And you can see that I'm planning for the future. If I ever do want to put brakes on this, I will be able to because I had them put a brake flange on this. And so what this gives you the ability to do, this is a brake flange, just a little thing back here with four holes. For now, it's just going to be sitting here with nothing to do. But in the future, if I want to put brakes on this, I'll be able to replace just the hub with a brake hub assembly and you will use this to mount that on there. And so I'm good to go for in the future if I ever do want to do that. Let's get the other side going.
and then we'll actually start tightening some things down and we're getting closer and closer to being done. Okay, so I just did some research and I found out that it probably is a good idea to put a little bit of grease up in here. If I had lithium grease, I would use that. I don't, but I do have some Lucas grease, the red and tacky that is extremely good grease. But I found a product that is really uh, cool and I would recommend you buy it if you can. This bolt right here that goes through the shackle, they make one that has a Zerk fitting on this end so that anytime you want to, you can just run up and put a grease gun on it and uh, fill it back up with oil, which I think is very cool. So there's something here I want you to see, and that is, here's the leaf spring, I'm pointing at it with my finger. And if you recall, when you had this apart, there is a nut right here. Uh, let's see, can you see it? Yeah, here's a nut under the leaf spring, and there was a hole right in the middle, which hopefully, hopefully you can see right here. There's a hole right there. And so, when you start tightening this up, you want to make sure that as this plate gets further and further up, that you don't somehow mess that up. That plate needs to do that right there. See how that nut comes through that hole? You need to make sure that it does that as you start tightening this up. Okay, it's probably pretty standard, but the uh, socket that I'm going to be using is three quarter inch. And as you can see, it's actually black. It's meant for an air gun, but uh, I'm only gonna use that because it's the uh, deep well socket and that's gonna come in really handy. So I'm gonna get this on here. So it'll probably be a little bit clumsy, at least to start with. I'm gonna recommend you do these in a cross pattern. Okay, so when I say you wanna tighten these in a cross pattern, this is what I mean. You wanna start in one corner and move to the other corner down here and then move up to this corner and down to this corner so you're doing a cross pattern if that makes sense a cross like that you don't want to put uh, this pretty much goes with anything when you're working on automotive or anything else boats whatever you never want to put one nut on and tighten it all the way down as hard as you can and then start on the next one get it on here get it relatively close to where it's just close to starting to tighten down and then move to another one and put it on there. You don't ever want to do your final tightening until you've got them all fairly close and then you'll tighten them again. Okay, and before I completely tighten this down, I'm gonna to go to the other side and see how that side is looking. All right, so I did a little bit of research and I found out that based off the size of the U-bolt, that is how you determine how much torque you put on these. Okay, so I've measured these. They are 7 sixteenths. And so what I found said 45 foot-pounds of torque. So I'm going to run my torque spec up to 45 pounds. Okay, 45 foot-pounds of torque. I'm going to do these one at a time. 45, my goodness. 45. 45 45 so there we go that's 45 pounds on this side okay so it is time to tighten down the shackle bolt uh, the nut on the other side that you really can't see but I've got my socket on it so you can see where it's at what I have found online is there's actually no torque setting for this uh, no torque spec for this and you're supposed to tighten it down till it's kind of tight and then back it back off about a quarter turn the reason for that is because the eyelet on the leaf spring needs to actually be able to move a little bit inside the shackle. You don't want to pinch the shackle so tight on the leaf spring that it can't move. That's a bad thing. So what we're going to do is, I'm going to tighten this down, and you may be saying, well, how is that staying still? Why is this not spinning on you? Remember, I had to take my mallet and tamp that into place because it has those little bitty threads on the outside of the uh, bolt, and those hold it tight against the shackle. So hopefully it won't turn at all if I didn't strip those out. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to tighten this. And 
and I'm watching it kind of tighten down. Okay, so now it's actually starting to tighten up, and uh, right there it's tight. It's actually tight right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to back it off, just like they said, about a quarter turn. about right there and I'm gonna leave that there and so ideally now that leaf spring eyelet can move around just a little bit this end of the leaf spring can move in that shackle however it needs to I've already got the other side done and so guess what it is time to put the wheels back on my trailer Whoa! all right let's get the wheels on But I feel really good now because I've got this trailer with this brand new axle on there. Nice and shiny and clean. So that's going to wrap this up. <laughs> I hope you learned something. I know I learned a lot. If I had to do it again and if I didn't film it, I could do that extremely quick. Other than the paintwork, that takes some time. But I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you so much for watching another video. God bless. Good luck if you take on a project like this. Ask me any questions you want to down below. If you're curious where I finally got my axle, I got it at Sweetwater Metal Products in Sweetwater, Tennessee. They were extremely fast. So good luck out on the water. God bless. Have a great day.